In this video, I'll show you how to track and analyze your campaign performance in Google X4. No matter if you want to track emails, social media, or ads, what I will show you today applies to all of them. This way, you'll be able to determine which campaign is performing the best and which is wasting your money and effort. <laughs> Hello, data people. I'm Robert from Clicks.ly, and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let me first show you where you can find this report. So in GA4, you just navigate to reports and here you find acquisition and then click on traffic acquisition. You should see here session primary channel group. Then you're in the right place. Here, if you just scroll down, you'll see these, um, these are called channel groups. J4 just kind of created these buckets of different types of uh, channel groups. And channel groups just mean like either they came, for example, here we have organic search. This means Bing and Google search. That's where organic search would be. Referral is some uh, other websites that refer to you. I don't know if you have something from another publication, another website, it would show up here. Then you have email. That's kind of self-explanatory. Then you have something like paid search. This is for ads that you, you actually pay for and especially this is for Google ads and then you have organic social this is all the social media you have so if you have any links on social media they would be grouped under organic uh, social and so on there are a few that are a little bit maybe not clear like direct and un unassigned direct just means it doesn't know uh, where to put you and unassigned is that it's kind of incomplete you have parts of it is has some information but it doesn't have complete information so it kind of uh, groups you like this now you could go here and click on the session primary channel and you could see campaign here so these are campaign names that this website has set up this is something that you can set up your, yourself this is something you can set up manually and actually you have to do it so that you can distinguish different campaigns from each other so for example here we have these are just like a generic uh, campaigns they they're not really they didn't set them so for example organic uh they just all go into the bucket if they come from google search but we have here these these ones are actually from email and this specific one is from Google Ads. First of all, how does Google Analytics 4 know what campaign people clicked on? Well, it doesn't. And we kind of need to tell it. And to do that, we need uh, to use something called UTM parameters. And it sounds complicated, but actually it's just some parameters that we need to add to the URL. For example, look at this URL. Notice how the black part is just a regular URL. And then all the stuff in red, that's the UTM parameters. They are easy to spot as they mentioned UTM. So UTM source, UTM medium, and UTM campaign. For example, if you would click on this URL, it would tell GA4 that this click came from a newsletter. It is an email and the campaign name is evergreen. So let me show you how to use a free tool to build these URLs with UTMs. It's super easy once you understand the logic behind it. The easiest way is to just type in Google UTM Builder and you have this one campaign URL builder. Make sure it's from ga dev duels googlecom So this is the right place to be. So I have it here open already and it's super simple to use. First of all, you need to place your website URL, whatever that is. So in my case, I'm going to place my website and this is the courses section. So you can see there's a, uh, this is the page courses and I'm just placing it here. Now we can fill in the rest. Campaign ID, you're not going to use it that often because it's mainly meant for uh, Google ads and you can add campaign IDs here and you can also use it for Facebook ads and things like that. But when you're just filling in just here, uh, you're probably not going to use it. Campaign source and medium and also the campaign name, they are uh, mandatory. You can see there's the little star. That means we need to fill them in. Let's start with campaign source and uh, the source is kind of where they come from. So the like the website they came from. For example, if they came from Facebook, you would just type facebook.com. Or if they came from, I don't know, fast, fast.com, that would be the website. This is the referrer in this case. Because in my case, I'm gonna use my email. Um, it could be newsletter. It could be a newsletter and then I can put a date to it. Let's say it's uh, uh, 10th of October. So that's the date I'm going to send the email. And this way I'll know where people are coming from. Personally, I like to keep it more generic at this stage. So it's just newsletter. And then I'll add more details to the campaign name. But let's say it'll be now newsletter. And then the medium is how they get. What, what is the medium they took to get to your website? So in my case, it's email. 
but it could be uh, you have here example CPC which is uh, basically Google Ads or you could have something like paid uh, paid search there are a few different default ones you can use. By the way, I've created a cheat sheet of all the default source in medium UTM values that Google expects and a short explanation of how and when to use each of, uh, each of the parameters. Grab it by clicking on the first link in the description. Okay, and then after you have the medium, you need to have a campaign name, which it shows that it's mandatory, but I believe if you uh, don't fill it in, it will still work, but I like to fill it in. So for example, if I'm uh, sending an email, I want to know which email it is. So you could either uh, place the, the date like I already did before. So let's say 10 uh, October, or you could also say, hey, this is the evergreen email that I sent out. So that's the campaign name because I'm sending out the same email to everybody who joins my list. Let's keep it at that. Let's say that's the case. Then you have campaign term. This is just uh, usually used for paid keywords. You can see it, it uh, describes it here. And then you have campaign content. Uh, this is to differentiate your ads, but you could also use it to differentiate your campaign. So for example here, let's say it's in my email and let's say I have the same link twice on in the email. I have one at the top, let's say top banner, or I could also have the bottom button. Let's say those are the two places. So I could now distinguish the two by adding them here. So I would need to create one link with bottom button and then another link with the uh, other parameter top banner. Let's keep this one. And now you can see here, it generates this uh, campaign URL. All you have to do is just copy it from here. And now uh, if you want, you come to your email, this is uh, ConvertKit or actually now it's called Kit. And I'm about to send this email and I wanna add the link here to my courses page. So what I do, I just add it as a normal link and I paste it in this long URL. You don't see the whole URL here. So let me op open up a new tab so you can see it fully. But you can see it just added these things to here. UTM source newsletter, UTM medium email, and UTM campaign evergreen. And we even have that UTM content bottom button. So you can see the URL gets quite long. So that's the sort of a drawback of using this, but you, you do get all of these details now because I came to this website, it will show up in GA4. So I go back to my email marketing tool and I'm gonna just add this URL. So whenever somebody clicks on this, I'll know that they came from this email and it was the uh, bottom, uh, bottom link or button, whatever I called it here. So that's how simple it is to use. Now, this works exactly the same no matter what is your um, like medium. So are you using LinkedIn post? If you're putting LinkedIn, uh, li a link there, then you can use this uh, the same way. You would just copy this URL that you got it from here. Obviously, you need to update it. So it says LinkedIn and stuff like that, right? And then you just copy this URL from here and place it in your LinkedIn post. The same thing applies if you're, you know, guest blogging somewhere and you want to place a link on that blog post, you would just come here, set this up, and place this URL uh, on the other person's website. The only thing you should not use the UTM parameters is for your own website. So if you have a link from your website to your own website, don't use it. One more thing I wanna mention is that you always need to check, uh, for example, if your email marketing tool is already adding UTM parameters. So for example, uh, in ConvertKit, it is possibility. So here in account settings, if you come to the advanced section, so here I'm in advanced, there is this toggle button where I can just automatically append UTM parameters to my email links. So what it does, it just takes uh, the information that's available and then it just does it automatically. I think it uses the emails subject line as the, you know, as the UTM campaign, uh, but other than that, it works perfectly. So if you're interested, your tool might already have this functionality and that way you don't need to always set it up um, manually. This is also a case in Facebook ads. You also have similar in other tools. So just make sure it is not enabled if you're using it uh, manually. Okay, now that you know about UTM parameters and how to use them, let me show you how you can use them to analyze your campaigns. Let's head to GA4 dashboard. Uh, you need to wait for about 24 hours, then it shows up in GA4. And once you start seeing those, you can come here. Again, you go to reports, you go to traffic acquisition, under acquisition, and you'll see this report. Now, if you wanna uh, see specifically your campaign name, then you would select from here campaign, session campaign. And this way, if you know which, which you're looking for, then you could come here and let's say, oh, I wanna know more about this one. I can copy it here. 
and there's this search box. We can just copy in here and this will filter just by this, by this campaign. And now you see more information. Okay, well, I'm not sure if which was this, so what uh, it, it came from email or something else. Well, you can add a secondary dimension. You just, you just click on this little plus icon and then type in here session. Oh, actually, no, just type source. And I like to use source slash medium. If you click on that, you'll see that, okay, no, this is mainly from newsletter. You see here, email. And it's clearly this campaign was part of an email campaign. But if you want to compare different reports to each other, then what you could do is let's remove the stuff. And you could here, let's choose again the session default channel group. So we see these. These are the groups that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Uh, and let's say I want to just compare emails to, get, uh, to each other. So I'm going to select email. I'm going to just type in here. I want to filter by email. So I'm going to filter here, use the filter. And then you can see you have only emails. Now I can add here more information, but like campaigns. So I'm going to add session campaign. And now it's going to just show me all the email campaigns it's aware of. So next, what I can do is I can highlight certain, uh, certain campaigns. Now make sure that whatever campaign you're looking at and comparing that the dates are also updated. So you want to make sure that the uh, two campaigns you're comparing that they're both, you know, they have the start and the end date is within the dates you see here. Then what I like to look here is definitely how many sessions it gets. And another one is important is obviously engagement rate. If they're highly engaged, it gives you some good signals. And then if you scroll even more, you have this one here, which is session, session key event rate. Actually, you can choose purchase from here. And this will tell you the conversion rate for purchases from this campaign. If you don't have this one, I would add a conversion rate which you can add by adding a calculator metric in GA4. It sounds all co complicated, but it takes about five minutes and you can add uh, more things into this. I would also like delete some of these uh, metrics because they're, they're just not useful. So if you're interested in the top right corner now, there should show up a banner. If you click on it, it will take you to the right tutorial. But in any case, you want to look at the conversion rates from your uh, campaigns because that tells you the quality of your traffic. So the higher the conversion rate, the better your message resonated with your audience. Uh, and obviously they that way they also bought. You can see that here, the campaign that is doing had the most sessions also has pretty high conversion rate. So 4.8, we have here a few that have a better conversion rate. So for example, this one had a really good conversion rate. It just didn't have enough sessions to actually make an impact. You see only 252, whereas here we had 5,000 something. So clearly they pushed this email to maybe more people or just more people clicked on the link in the email. So definitely uh, conversion rate is interesting and you could always, let's say, uh, sort this by conversion rate. Let's say here the highest ones, because this will tell you the ones that have the highest potential. So maybe you did something correct in those emails, even they didn't get enough traffic, they still did really well. So the first one I would ignore, it's just way too little uh, sessions here. But here we're starting to have more sessions. So we could now go into the July campaign and say, hey, wait, why was it so good? Why did it convert at 5%? Whereas we have here 4.8 for the, uh, the top one, the top in terms of traffic. Or if your campaign is not about conversions, not about revenue, it's more of a educating your customers, then maybe you want to look at the engagement rate and the average engagement time per session. So you could come here and just sort by engagement rate and see which one got the highest numbers. Now, obviously here you have 100%. That really is not, it's again, just three people. That is pretty high engagement rate. So I would ignore that. But then you start having here, here, this one, October at 80%. Well, if I quickly look at this, looks like all of them had pretty similar engagement rate. However, here, this campaign had a pretty low one and well, it had 252 sessions. So I could look into, well, maybe something that we mentioned in email or what we promised in the email doesn't actually, you know, we're not delivering on that on our website. Definitely something worth checking. Now you know how to find and analyze your campaigns, but just looking at the data without knowing how to turn it into insights will just waste your time. That's why you should watch this video next, where I'll teach you my six-step system to turn data into insights.